Mr. Chairman, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Also, people which are perhaps following us from uh, very far away. And uh, yeah, uh, so you just open uh, the, by presenting, presenting the, 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 the approach, which is, I would like to say, is the conventional approach. I'm very pleased that you will hear my presentation because to some extent I'm going to be a little bit controversial and that will open perhaps the, 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 the I mean, the appetite for, for discussion in the, yeah. yeah. So first, let me start telling you that, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to integrate in my presentation perhaps some of the most important messages which has been said this morning. Uh, well, the, the first one is decarbonizing is, uh, should be the, 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 I mean, the goal. Houston, Houston, we have a problem. This has been said by, by many of you. I mean, that I don't have to repeat it. But uh, I'm going to take perhaps uh, some uh, specific points, for instance, from Manuel Blanco, when he said that what important is looking nine steps ahead from the chess game. The, I think this is something that is very important. I think um, also uh, going straight to the, to, this, to the customer needs, which has been already said by Costas uh, this morning, I think is something which is this very practical message is going to be taken into account. Complementarity, as has been already uh, presented by, 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 Cost, by, by Nicolas uh, this afternoon. And in this respect, uh, all that you have already presented, perhaps we get a new approach on how to deal with non-dispatchable and dispatchable technologies. And I'm, I'm, at least I, what I expect is that after my presentation, you will have some doubts and you will perhaps will think of the need of trying to do the, the, this kind of modeling studies with, with the approach that I'm going to, to, to tell here, because there's a huge difference and perhaps what we are going to have to feel like a need is going to be also very different. Uh, I also uh, want to, to refer to, to the differences in terms of, of prices of um, batteries as compared with CSP, as has been already said by Wes this, this, uh, this afternoon as well, and also regarding the role that CSP is going to play in the future. It's not only 24 hours plans, I think there will be a, some another approach that perhaps will justify the large expectations that Cedric Philibert this morning has shown, uh, which is the role that CSP is going to play at world level in the year 2050. I think it's going to be earlier, but, uh, and so the, the main, uh, I mean, uh, information uh, that I would like to transmit to you is that we don't have to be, to be shy, we have to be proud that if today we compare the cost of the so-called gas combined cycles, which is the, the energy transition, as with the cost of CSP today, especially for not for 24 hours, but for dispatching during nighttime, as has been the case in Dubai, we can demonstrate that today we are cheaper, we are better, we don't contaminate, and perhaps this is the way to proceed and to, 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 to demonstrate that this is the way that we have to proceed. Regarding who is listening to us, I also have a very, very important breaking news for all of you, which is uh, that Spain is going to place uh, CSP in the so-called Na uh, Plan Nacional Integrado Energía y Clima, National Integrated Plans for Climate and, and Energy, as all member states in, in Europe should submit to the European Commission by the end of this year. So Spain will manage. And after a long time of fights and discussions, and, and insist, insist, we were very, very much insisting, now we are, I can tell you that uh, CSP is going to appear in the plans of Spain. I expect that uh, Spain will not be the only one that will show that has an expectation for CSP in the 2030. And so I, if you find my presentation of some interest for convincing your countries that this may be a way to proceed, I uh, will be more than pleased to, uh, I mean, you are free to use it, uh, and I will be more than pleased to visit and to try to convince the policymakers in your countries to see, uh, to, 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 to be convinced that the approach I'm going to tell to you is perhaps the more, the, the smarter one that you can imagine. And this is something that uh, I will insist in, in trying to, to, to demonstrate uh, here to you. And uh, yeah, and also that, uh, I mean, uh, we, we have to, no, not to miss any opportunity, just to try to convince everybody that when they say that a CSP is more expensive than gas, we have to say this is not the case. When they say that CSP is more expensive than PV, we, are, we have to say this is not the case. If we compare peers with peers, we are comparing non-dispatchable PV with, with dispatchable CSP. And uh, I think this is something that, at least in the, in the, in the CSP community, we have to have clear 
just to uh, present the essential role that we are going to play. So that's what I'm going to cover with my presentation. And I hope that after this very encouraging presentation, I'm not going to, to frustrate the expectation that you have with my with what I'm going to tell to you. So first, let me just uh, go very quick to, to this uh, common uh, understanding and the big question mark. The common understanding is Houston, we have a problem. The carbonization is, is a real, uh, I mean, it's very urgent. And this is the main thing that we have to face today. Electricity is the easiest energy vector to be decarbonized, as renewable technologies are currently cheaper, much, much cheaper than nuclear or fossil fuels. Uh, therefore, electrification plus energy efficiency has been said by, by Chuck this morning. Uh, uses uh, for final uses, particularly in transport and climatization, along with increase of efficiency, is a clear trend. Uh, but the last majority of new capacity to be added is 100%, is going to be almost 100% renewables. Nobody think in Spain that we are going to promote a new coal plant, a new nuclear plant, a new gas plant in Spain. Nobody, even the, 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 the most conventional people in the, in the utility sector in Spain says that 100% new capacity in Spain will be renewable. And if it is the case, the renewables that everybody has in mind are PV and wind. They, are, they don't consider any other uh, renewables and they just are considering that as they are not dispatchable, the question is, is there any solution envisaged to avoid the need of fossil backup? So which is the missing piece in this, in this scheme? Uh, and there are three thoughts uh, three uh, school of thought, uh, schools of thought regarding this missing piece. And I'm going just to, to put it very, very, very simple. One, which is more or less uh, uh, assumed by, by everybody, by TSOs and by regulators all around Europe until now, is here, come on, gas is not that bad. Emissions are much lower than from coal. Let's win and PV grow as much as possible, and gas will be here forever. We are going here to help a coal as transition and try to keep us in transition as long as possible. So this is one uh, school of thought. The other school of thought is, don't worry for good payments from wind and PV. Let's get them growth without limits. Batteries in the grid will be very, or storage in the grid is going to be very cheap in the future, and they will accommodate all possible surplus. So I am a believer, and I think that this is going to happen. And uh, so, you know, uh, I will elaborate a little bit more in the, uh, about the, 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 the storage in, in the grid. And uh, okay, but this is not the case as today. Uh, just to give you a simple figure, in Spain, one day of electricity, if we want to store one day of electricity in Spain, it will cost us 10% of, of our gross domestic product, one year. So that's something which is really impressive. And the third one, which is the one I'm going to defend to you, and I'm going to, to tell you why I think with CSP, you can just follow the third uh, school of thought, is that planners in a balanced a balance fleet with dispatchable and dispatchable renewables, you are going to reduce by far the need of fossil backup. Perhaps we are going to need fossil backup for a certain time, but not as much as uh, is appears in the in the in the least cost expansion models, uh, which are being currently used by by NSOE or by Acer at European level. Uh, and so, even the, the the need for grid for storage grid is going to be much much reduced or even avoided. So renewables are resources are so abundant, but the knowledge to generate are so different one as compared to the other. So we have this four, and there is also a very dominant uh, school of thought that say, I am agnostic. I am agnostic, and uh, I will focus on lowest price. And the question is, if the main uh, goal that we have to face is decarbonization, is this the right approach to achieve decarbonization goal also at a minimum price, but it is the way, if you just are looking only for for the cheapest solution, as uh, Manuel Blanco said this morning, and many others of you already said, if we took a decision today, perhaps we are going to be a little bit frustrated in the future because this was not the, the, better, the best decision that we have, that could have been taken today just for solving the problem in a medium or long-term basis. The answer, in my opinion, is not, completely not. Smart planning is the right answer, and dispatchable renewable technologies with the storage are precisely the key for this smart uh, planning. I think that policymakers and planners should understand the difference among technologies and the dispatch flexibility of some of them, particularly CSP and, and, and biomass. 
and certainly uh, um, water. I mean, uh, big hydro is, is very important for sure and should be there. But the problem with big hydro is that there are very few possibilities to enlarge not only big hydro plants, but even the pumping stations are not so easy. Just uh, it will be a very ideal solution, but uh, in most of the countries, it's very difficult just to find places in which you can apply the additional pumping pumping stations. I'm requesting. What policymakers should understand is what the system need and which is what they need to ask uh, the renewable uh, systems hourly and seasonally at the minimum cost. And this is something that uh, I will give you two examples. And the, the, the first example is which is the, the result of what I call blind least cost expansion models. I call them blind because they don't cap the CO2. They simply say, OK, let's try to find the minimum uh, cost. Let's try to put a cost on the emissions. But the, what I'm trying to find is with this cost of emissions, I would like to see which is the minimum cost for that. Uh, I, they don't normally uh, look very much in detail which are the ramps and which are the synchronous uh, amount which a system needs just for being stable and for being secure. And also, they don't take into account mainly this famous incremental curve of balancing costs and auxiliary services costs that a lot of non-dispatchable renewables will cause into the system. So they say gas is here to help. With gas backup, I can cover everything. But normally, those systems, I call them blind, are not uh, uh, the results that they, they get. And I'm going to provide you a very uh, detailed example, which is unfortunately very country specific. It's done for Spain. But I think we'll open the eyes of many of you if you want just to do the same in your countries. I think it's something that can be done very easily with very low resources and can demonstrate practically that another mix is possible. The never ending fossil, the, the results of these least cost expansion models. Normally, never-ending fossil, uh, fossil, uh, fossil backup and corresponding emissions uh, appears in the results. They show high curtailments and also high hidden system overall costs that normally has, are not reflected in the results of the studies. On the other hand, what we did in, in Proterno Solar, we just applied common sense inductive approaches, uh, providing a achievement decarbonization goals, as you will see, higher renewable contribution, much higher than has been thought uh, before, and with much reduced curtailments. The example of this, uh, what I'm telling to you, is the, the, the report. Uh, I don't know how to, yeah. Well, anyhow, the report that the expert committee in Spain, 14 very reputed people uh, working 16 months together, six months together, presented at 600 pages, just uh, disregarding CSP for 2013 in Spain. Uh, as I told you, the breaking news is that we have already. Uh, manage to put CSP in the picture. And most important, let me tell you this breaking news, is that next year is going to be a specific auctions for CSP in Spain, as never happened before. So that's something that we already, uh, and this is very important, so I'm very, very proud of, of this achievement. And uh, this expert committee uh, just simply provide this uh, amount, a very big amount of information, but in, in our opinion is completely uh, and no, no useful at all. And what we did is uh, the example I'm going to present to you is the transition report where we have found, looking with a magnified glass into the ramps, into the hour by hour uh, production in Spain from renewables, from a long series of data, we have already looked into very much detail and we have found that no nuclear plants, uh, no coal plants, and much lower uh, gas combined cycles, as has been already presented by the, by the expert committee report, can be demonstrated that we can do it. And the most surprising thing, not surprising for me, but the most surprising thing for many people is that this can be done even at lower cost than the other one. So that's something that uh, sounds uh, a little bit magic, but I will explain to you why it's not magic, but it's for real. Uh, when we look into the fundamentals of electricity planning, and I mean, you, Andres, you know very, very much uh, about that, is uh, meeting the demand at any time, it's about programming, the dispatching is that you have available. You have to look into the technical constraints. But OK, you will stack up one uh, uh, up the other. And so you will find you will meet the demand. Uh, that is, you can foresee the demand very, very easily with uh, 24 hours in advance or even longer. And so here is the kind of, of this is an example of how uh, our mix will work in autumn. In autumn, uh, this, this orange is the CSP. This is uh, photovoltaic. So we are going to dispatch the CSP after or when the sun goes down. 
and we are going to complement photovoltaic during as much as possible. In this mouth, because our design is designed with a certain amount of storage, we are not able just to overlap with PV uh, next day. And that's the reason why we need more interconnections, more import of electricity at that time. Import, uh, interconnections is very, very important at the European level and also some gas. But gas on the top, we will have, we'll, we, we are, I will show you uh, the, 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 the results of which is the largest amount of gas that we have already found, which is needed in our system doing this kind of approach. And the goal of planning, in my opinion, uh, is not the, the common, the common uh, understanding of that, but I am sure that in two, three years from now, this is going to be the common understanding, is that the goal of planning should be first to achieve a carbon-free generation system, ensuring the quality of supply and grid stability at an affordable cost. I don't see at a minimum cost. I say at an affordable cost because Houston, we have a problem. So we need to decarbonize. And that's uh, the, the main uh, reason why we need to, to think in that way. Normally, the, the, this is my opinion, this is the right approach, but blind least cost expansion models do the other way around. They say minimum cost, uh, keeping the stability, and let's see how much they are going to decarbonize to a certain extent, for sure, because they will put a lot of wind, a lot of PV, so they will displace some part of gas, some part of coal, but they will not decarbonize as much as we will do if we follow the other, the other approach in that way. So right now, it is still, uh, when the European Commission is discussing the market, the market design and this, those type of things, they are not yet considering that this is the right way to proceed. But I can tell you that this is going to be the right way, the right way to plan in the coming years without any doubt uh, at a world level, not only at the European, but at a world level. Uh, in, in, my, in our opinion, there is no possible any transition in the electrical sector without CSP plans, and I will explain you why. If you look into the, into the left hand half part of the, of the slide, this is the wind production average of a long series of, the, of years, hourly average of wind production. You will see that it's more or less flat. Unfortunately, the maximum power is about 30% of the nominal power of the wind installed in Spain because there will be days with no wind at all. And so, but you do look every, uh, the, the average of four or 10 years at four o'clock in the afternoon, you will see that the, this is the, the, the average has been in the range of 25, 30%. So if you put more, much more wind, you are going to have a lot of curtailments because wind is very volatile and uh, you will have a lot of, uh, so you can just, in my opinion, this is a kind of uh, upper limit for wind energy to be deployed in Spain. We have 25 gigas in Spain of wind, and uh, perhaps there is room for something more, but not too much, in my opinion. Photovoltaic, the photovoltaic shows at an average, also they don't reach, because there are days with no sun at all, and so they don't reach 100% of the nominal power. This is the average of four years. So we have uh, made a study of four years because we had data for the four, last four years in Spain of CSP plants without using gas for generation. In Spain, the law changed four years ago, and before we were uh, allowed to uh, burn 15% of our production come, came from gas, which is not the case uh, since four years, four years ago. That's why we took the average of four years, and this is the typical uh, average of, of, uh, of PV. So the question is, which technology is going to fill these gaps? Because I mean, there is no other way to think. So we have, uh, it's not only CSP is good f to tackle with the duck curve. It's not only that. So we are not talking about uh, CSP pickers. We are trying to ask and try to find which is the right technology which, is, which can fill those gaps, because these gaps are going to stay forever. And so gas people say, okay, no matter, no, no, no problem. Here I'm to help, so I can, I can do it. They can do this job. But the question is, is there any technology that can do this uh, much cheaper and without uh, burning anything than gas? There are no utility scale 12 hours batteries as of today. They are not existing. So when uh, the Aqua tried to, go to present, which is the, the, the offer for the DIWA project in Dubai, they consider batteries, PV uh, with batteries, CSP, and gas combined cycles. They try to look who is able now to deliver to me uh, 600 or 700 megawatts with 12 half of storage in PV. They ask in the market and nobody uh, react because they, this is a non-existing product. They are not 12 hours batteries for utility scaling as of today. Uh, 
and the experts don't uh, don't expect them on the next decade. So uh, they are, uh, the batteries will be good uh, to complement uh, as happening in the United States or in other countries, one hour of operation or something like that, but they are not expecting batteries to cover this part of the, of the picture. Uh, so again, which is the, what, what is the, which is the missing piece? The missing piece is exactly one energy, one technology that can be coupled completely without losing at all. So we are, when you charge a battery, when you charge a pumping system, you lose 30% or 20% of the energy. We, in, in waiting or in delaying the production of CSP plant, some hours, we don't lose anything. It's almost anything, I'm an engineer, I can say 100% efficiency, but we lose less than 1%. In, in, in waiting for half a day uh, with, with our tank, molten salt, tank full of, uh, of, molten, of, of, of hot molten salt. So we can decouple perfectly without any degradation, exactly costing the same, uh, just by saying, okay, during the day, we are not going to produce anything. I'm not going to compete with PV. What I'm going to do is just complement PV uh, all sunny days. There, there's going to be a very cheap, the cheapest uh, mix that you may imagine PV plus CSP, they can provide cheaper price than any other system during sunny days. It is true that there will be no sunny days. And okay, it is true that perhaps we need the gas if we don't have um, hydro enough or biomass enough or wind enough that may complement wind and, and, and solar are to some extent complementary, but they will be, as we have already found, they will be with the magnifier glass, we'll see that there are many days in which there is no wind and no sun. So something has to be, it has to be on the system just to, 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 to do that. And so what do you think about one technology which is renewable, but that can supply synchronous, absolutely, absolutely firm supply uh, with no deviation for a day ahead program because you know exactly how much energy you have stored and you know exactly, without any deviation, how much energy you can produce. Or you can follow the recommendations of the, of the, of the TSO to say, uh, please dispatch me half power during this time or whatever it is needed for the system. So this is no uh, uncertainties in the way that we, we can dispatch. Perhaps from one day to the other, you can be wrong when you uh, forecast how much energy are you going to, 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 to store. But as soon as the energy is stored, there is 100% firm, 100% secure, and synchronous dispatch. So this is uh, the recommendation on how to think of CSP in the future in the planning of uh, energy systems. And regarding the, the grid built in storage, um, so um, some, uh, there are some, some, some misperceptions uh, that uh, perhaps there are two, I mean, the two schools of thoughts that I, the, of thought that I uh, explained, one is gas, is able to do anything, don't worry. The other is storage in the grid, is going to do anything, don't worry. So I put some doubts in, in, the, in, the, in the gas uh, option because I think gas will be always producing CO2 and we are cheaper than gas today. So I think that there is no way to think in sunny countries on uh, potential gas combined cycles to cover the needs. Uh, but uh, any grid uh, investment, any, any storage in the grid investment, has to take into account that uh, some business plans must be based in buying low and selling high or having low cost and selling high. That's the only way to, to have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, sound businesses. And in my opinion, it is doubtful that speculative batteries projects for grid services go beyond a small number of hours. So we don't expect that uh, what is needed to cover the PV production out of sunny hours in my opinion, this is never going to be covered by uh, storage in the grid, because storage is a much more speculative uh, investment that uh, has no uh, too much, uh, I mean, uh, running uh, room for, for this type of ideas. Some simple ideas to profit from large volume of curtailments are batteries in the grid and power to gas. Uh, hydrogen is one of the systems. But in my opinion, life cycle assessments on how much energy you invest for converting electricity into hydrogen and how much energy you recover when you convert hydrogen into electricity again, in my opinion, they are not completely uh, thoroughly carried out. So the question marks that I have regarding uh, storage is going to solve every, everything, storage in the grid, uh, not storage in the plants, but the storage in the grid, is who will be willing to further invest in non-dispatchable generation technologies such as wind or PV, when surplus start to be relevant, 
so is, is somebody, uh, I mean, do you consider that there will be investors that when uh, the curtailments are starting to be 10% are going to invest in a second or in the next uh, GPD or wind uh, power plant? I doubt very much that this is going to be the case. So therefore, will be the curtailment volume enough to justify investments in batteries? This is one important question, mark, fundamental question mark, that, that, that has to be taken into account. Another, consumer empowerment and proactive demand management and smart grids are going to flatten the hourly price fluctuations, the, 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 the cars in the, in the systems. Therefore, it is sound to expect significant value peak price difference in the future. In my opinion, they are going to be lower and lower in the future. So we know that aspirins can be bought in the pharmacy if we get a headache, but shouldn't be better prevent having a headache? And this is what we are recommending here. Uh, so, uh, my, in my opinion, the renewable dispatchable technology like, like uh, CSP with the storage and big hydro and biomass could deliver electricity when needed, awaiting fossil backup at a very, very large extent. So, um, regarding the, this has been already talk, uh, presented more or less by, by Nicolas uh, this morning, but uh, just uh, some, something that is not very, very good perceived. If you ask uh, to the public opinion how much storage for electrical purposes are, to, as of today, installed in batteries or how much is in, in thermal uh, systems, now there are uh, 10 times more uh, thermal systems for electricity production than batteries in terms of installed capacity. And regarding the cost, the difference is, as of today, the cost in electrical equivalent production, the cost of, an, of storage tanks in, in, in a tower plants. If it is not tower plant, it would be doubled. But in tower plants, uh, because the delta T is, is larger, we can offer systems at less than $50 per kilowatt hour uh, equivalent electricity to the grid. Why the latest, uh, I mean, uh, project for, from Tesla in, 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 in Australia, there are not many, and it's difficult to track, but it will be in the range of 500. So they are 10 times more expensive than our systems as of today, and we are more uh, system installed, more power installed, just to compare and to say that we, are, we don't have to demonstrate anything. We are there, and our plants are being operated in Spain since more than 10 years right now, and that's all one was uh, put in operation 2008, so 10 years about, with no incident at all. So we can charge and discharge every day, 300 days, days per year or 250 days per year, and no real problems with uh, working with the storage. And there is also regarding alternatives for grid, uh, for storage in the grid, there is also something that we can offer almost for free to the system, which is the power to heat. Is, is going to be only 40% efficient. But uh, in Germany, they are now trying to reconvert coal power plants with our storage tanks. They are going to put the storage tanks into coal power plants to convert into heat the electricity, surplus electricity from the offshore wind in Germany and not uh, burning any coal at all in this, in this plant, just using the, 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 the heat, which has been already obtained by converting electricity, which I think is a, is a, a kind of, of uh, <laughs> the people will be crazy, but they, they, are, they, are, they are going to make a big, a big plan. Uh, Michael Geyer, you know Michael Geyer, most of you know Michael Geyer, he's in charge of this project right now. So they are going, they are going to do this, this, this kind of approach. So we can do, if we have a lot of CSP plants, a lot of CSP fleet in, in a country like Spain, we can offer this because the, 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 the heater goes almost nothing. So this is already installed and we can offer, it's only 40%, but when you look at the hydrogen uh, lifespan or life cycle of the hydrogen, perhaps you have only 50%, so not no, no much more with huge investments. And this is with almost no investment. So there is something to be, to be considered. So what we did is just uh, this inductive approach. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm going to be quick in this, in this part, but we say, we know the demand forecast. We compare exactly with the same demand forecast than the expert committee did. We just used the same amount of renewables that the expert committee considered. But instead of having 50 gigawatts of PV in Spain, we say, OK, let's, let's have half and half, even more PV than PV, but more or less uh, share balance uh, between both of them. So we just uh, we know all oh, this is a very big good information that we have in Spain from the TSO in Spain. We have hourly information how much has been produced by PV or by wind uh, 10 years ago, the 2nd of February at 6 o'clock. Uh, so this, uh, this can be done. So instead of 
doing this kind of least cost spatial analysis, what we did is just take into account this fleet, just multiplying by the fleet that we consider we are going to have in, 2000, in 2030, and just uh, with the proposed fleet that is exactly the same that, that, than the expert committee, but sharing or splitting the solar in two parts. Uh, and so what we did is just uh, projecting, uh, putting, uh, stacking up generation units one after the other, how much backup is required, looking uh, day by day, hour by hour, we, we, we uh, find out how much backup would be required with this proposed fleet that we presented, uh, which is the generation cost, because we will know exactly how much are going to cost, uh, which will show the, I will show you the, 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 the cost estimation of the cost of different technologies from now on until the two, two, 2030. And we just take into account the penetration trend, we just multiply, and this is a very simple uh, exercise with what is the generation cost and with what was the emission level. Uh, and, uh, okay, just the, 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 the dispatch, uh, the, 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 how we use it is priority of dispatch, same generation profile of the reference period, wind, solar PV, co-generation and waste, they go uh, the first, then start solar activity plants with the profile starting after sunset or during the, the, the latest hours in the, in the afternoon, uh, we just didn't touch at all. This could be also clearly improved if we just uh, run the hydro plants for the goal of decarbonizing, we could even achieve even better results, but we just let exactly the same, uh, the same generation that the pump, uh, pumping generation and big hydro did in Spain in the last years. Then, if something is needed, we run biomass and we uh, use interconnections. And only as the, as the last choice, we just put combined cycles just to fill or uh, to, to respond or to fill the gap between all the previous uh, uh, technologies uh, as compared with the demand at every specific single hour. This is the, the key, is that instead of uh, running our plants as it has been, has been presented here or as is normally considered in most of the uh, analysis as has been already presented by Andreas, uh, it is uh, instead of running the plant during the day, we don't run the plant during the day. We, during the day we store the energy and we run the plant after sunset or during the, the, the latest hours in the afternoon. So, you know, by splitting these uh, 47 gigawatts of photovoltaics uh, and the already existing 2.3 gigawatts of CSP uh, in 25 gigawatts of photovoltaic and 20 gigawatts of, of, of PV, we just reduce the emissions from uh, 30 million tons to uh, 5 million tons. So that's something which is important. And the, regarding the price, I will let you know. We, we have, for your disposal, if you want to, to, to have it, we have uh, four tiers, uh, 12 months, uh, 30 days per month, um, 24 hours per day, we have this kind of, of plots. We can plot whenever, uh, and we have the Excel sheet in which you can just ask for which is the maximum ramp, uh, which is the minimum synchronous uh, uh, level that is produced with the different technologies. So this, this can be done, and we, we, have, we have plotted in different uh, presentations, different days, and this is a typical good day in autumn in which this is going to happen. We are, will not be able to overlap next day with the PV, and this is a very bad sunny day in which you will see that we are using interconnections and gas during the whole day. So this, this will happen, but uh, by using this kind of very smart dispatch complementary profile, we are going to reduce the current, the, the, the expected gas uh, consumption in Spain of 15% to less than 3%. So this is the, the, the complete, the different of the, of the story. Yeah, I'm going to finish and uh, the comments on the resulting gas backup is that, okay, it is true that uh, our study is a little bit simple. There will be reasons to increase the power of that backup, the security reserve, technical constraints, temporary interconnections, and ability. But on the other hand, we can use interruptive contracts for interrupting the supply to big consumers. We can just uh, include the demand management and the power management. And I think, uh, okay, there will be uh, reasons to increase or to decrease the maximum uh, level that we have already found is 16 gigawatts. Now we have 25. So we can just get rid of nuclear, get rid of coal, and get rid of a part of gas. Uh, and because the maximum uh, need of gas during this 
practical study and, and real study because we have used real data for real uh, um, renewable production in the last years is only 16 gigawatts of gas. Those are the prices that we have considered for our technology. We consider that we'll start at 70 euros per megawatt hour uh, in the 2021. We have now the, the Dubai project is even lower than that uh, and we will reach around 50. So CSP, we are going to pass from 75 to 50, around 50. And with PV, wind and biomass, those are the prices that we have already considered. Uh, this is the trend. Uh, we will incorporate much more PV right now than, than CSP. CSP is very flat here, but we will start being necessary uh, after the 2025, while PV is going to be the other way around. So they will, uh, they will decrease the, the increment of of, and, and the final reflection is, uh, we have been, uh, we, 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 we have seen the, in the presentation of Chuck and others uh, this morning and Cedric as well, uh, the famous uh, Enrel study. And the question is, and I'm been using uh, this, this uh, sentence from Machado, uh, which in Spain sounds very musical, only uh, solamente un necio confunde valor y precio. Necio, precio, that uh, sounds exactly the same. In English, it's only a fool confuses value and price, value with price. Uh, and also we have used uh, tremendously, uh, constantly, the real study. And uh, the, the question is, did we touch it right? So uh, we, with this kind of value approach, we are telling, I am taller, I am nicer, I am prettier, I am blonder than you, Please pay me double. So that's what perhaps is the conclusion of these type of things. In, my, in our opinion, we did it wrong in the past. This is true. All it is true. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't sell. Uh, policymakers are very much uh, under the tyranny of the blind uh, least cost expansion models. Uh, and uh, we, we have just really to offer exactly what we think is the, the right opportunity for SD plans to, to, to be developed at a very large scale. And uh, planners uh, won't have a better choice in southern countries. A balanced mix between PV and, and, and CSP, along with other renewables and efficiency as well, is the way to decarbonize the electrical system at an unbeatable price. As we have already demonstrated, and we can offer the Spanish study for your uh, for those of you which are interested in doing exactly the same thing in your country, there is a big myth. Um, we can get rid of the gas uh, backup forever. And this is not true. Right? And that's what we have already demonstrated. Not only speculate, but we have already demonstrated with real data of real past production of renewables, uh, considering one proposed fleet including the CSP and dispatching CSP after sunset, we can reach such a very impressive results, lower cost and uh, much lower emissions, which in my opinion should be the goal for planets in the future. So that's uh, what I would like to say and thank you very much. For me.